This is chapter 4-4. We're going to be using uh, corresponding parts of congruent triangles. Let's see. If two triangles are congruent, then their corresponding parts are congruent, which we're going to call that CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So we're going to talk about this proof that's in front of us here. So if you're given these two triangles, and you're given that AB is congruent to AD, and AC is congruent to AE, um, then, well, we can pick up vertical angles here to say that this angle here, that, that BAC is congruent to DAE. And now you can say that these two triangles are congruent by side angle side. Side angle side. So BAC is congruent to DAE. And once you've established that these two triangles are congruent, then you can say all their corresponding parts are congruent. So you could say that angle C is congruent to angle E. You could say that angle B is congruent to angle D. You could say that CB is congruent to ED. Because once you've established that this triangle is congruent to that triangle, then all the parts that correspond have to be congruent. Let's do another proof. Um, if you're given that this angle here is congruent to that angle, got that listed here, and angle A is congruent to angle K, well, then you can say reflexive property and say that BC is, con whoops, BC is congruent to itself. And now, from there, we can say that this triangle is congruent to that triangle by angle, angle, side, angle, angle, side. And make sure you get the letters in the right order. So I have it as two marks, so A, B, C, two, none, and one is going to, A, B, C is going to be congruent to two, none, and one, K, C, B, because we have to list these letters in the right order so that everything corresponds. And once you've established that this triangle is congruent to that triangle, then you could say that the corresponding parts are congruent, C, P, C, T, C. You could say that C, A is congruent to B, K. Okay? Okay. Well, I have the order of the letters backwards, but that's okay. If AC is, is congruent to KB, that's appropriate. AC, KB. Yep. Next image. All right, let's, where are we going with this? Well, it, it has a fair amount of power. If you are capable of saying that two triangles are congruent, and from there being able to use CPCTC, saying that their corresponding parts are congruent, congruent, then you can go on to prove other things. So we're going to try to prove that BD is perpendicular to AC. And well, we can if we think about using CPCTC. Let's start with what we can prove. It's two sides that are congruent, two more sides that are congruent, and a shared side AC up the middle. So we can prove that this triangle in pink, ABC, is congruent to triangle ADC. So that's my wife cooking. But anyway, so the shared side AC reflexive property up the middle is congruent to itself. And so from there, you can say that this triangle is congruent to that triangle. Now, if we're trying to prove that this line is perpendicular to that line, we need to show that, th that this triangle is congruent to that triangle, or that one and that one. Well. Once we've established that these, this pink and blue triangles are congruent, from there, we can use CPCTC to then say that this angle is congruent to that angle. Well, now, let's not worry about these two triangles over here. Let's worry about these two over here. Well, you've got a side and an angle, got a shared side. We can then prove that these two triangles are congruent. So we showed that this big triangle is congruent to this big triangle, we pulled out the information using CPCTC that this angle here is congruent to that angle, and then let's focus on it. If you then say that AE is congruent to itself, that's what's happening right here, then you can say that this triangle is congruent to that triangle by side angle side. And once you've es established that, here I'll put two marks here. Once you've established that this triangle is congruent to that triangle, then you can say that this angle is congruent 
to that angle, and since they're a linear pair, then they must be 90 degrees for both of them. Therefore, they're congruent to each other. If they're 90 degrees apiece, well, then these lines are perpendicular. So we're using, we started off back here with two triangles, being able to prove those were congruent, and then by being able to say that we picked off this information using CPCTC, then we could prove that these triangles are congruent, and then consequently we could then show that these two lines are perpendicular. That's the whole reason why we're learning CPCTC. And that's pretty much what I just said. Summary. First proven the pairs of triangles are congruent using the rules that we know. So from there we can say the corresponding parts are congruent. And that's it. Thank you for watching.